What's up guys, CP Morty here, back with another video. Now, Windows 10's tablet mode has really always grabbed my attention. I always thought it was kind of cool, but I never really had a full tablet experience to actually go ahead and play around with it. Whilst I did have a Surface for a long time, it was always on Windows 8.1, and I never really had a need to upgrade it to Windows 10. But recently, we've been checking out Windows 10 quite a lot, and I also do spent a week with the Windows 10 store, so I thought, why not go ahead and do this test at the same time as spending a week with the Windows 10 store, chucked it in tablet mode and I guess here's my sort of experience of actually using the tablet in a tablet mode with Windows 10. Now if you want to check out the previous video where we went ahead and actually found out whether the Windows 10 store was actually any good, you can find it linked right up there. But today we are taking a look at the Windows 10 tablet experience. Is it any good or is it still kind of really not that much use? Now tablet mode was initially implemented to go ahead and give people with tablets a much better Windows 10 experience. But after updates have rolled out, Windows 10 itself has actually gotten really good for touchscreen devices. Whether it be laptops or tablets, the actual touchscreen experience on Windows 10 is really, really awesome. Being able to just about touch any icon you want and do really anything with just your finger on the full desktop experience, the whole tablet idea really got ruled out pretty fast after a lot of people just realized the surfaces and a lot of other devices just straight up work when you are in a normal desktop experience. But nevertheless, I went ahead and threw it in tablet mode and well, let's get into some positive and negatives that I found during my time of actually using Windows 10 in a tablet mode. And kicking it into some positive first and foremost is the clean user interface. Whilst it is running on essentially desktop hardware as the Surface Pro 2 does feature a full desktop i5, it has a very clean and very polished user interface. It's fast and fluid and just flies through the Windows operating system. From the live tiles to the overall clean appearance, I really do like the way that they've implemented uh, the tablet mode on this system. And I completely now understand why the sort of live tiles down in the taskbar is actually still a thing. And that is because it actually is really, really useful to have. And I really do enjoy having them here, especially having large icons in the tablet mode just allows me to fly through everything and just allows you to click on something and know exactly what you're clicking on without accidental misclicks and little icons all over the place. As I did mention in a previous video, the Windows Store actually had a number of applications that I personally do use on it. So for me, I was able to stay in that whole Windows ecosystem tablet type of experience where I was able to use the tablet experience and keep using Windows Store applications for a clean and uniformed experience. I could go out and use x86 applications and all your standard desktop things, Steam and all that kind of stuff, no problems. But keeping it with the whole Windows platform was actually a really good experience. And being able just to relax and go ahead and open up the tablet and have it act as a tablet was really, really awesome. But overall, there wasn't exactly too many positives on this compared to the negatives that there was. Definitely, there was a large number of them. First and foremost, whilst I did say I like the live tile idea, but I also too really do hate it. Having live tiles constantly updating and changing their icons and stuff like that was a massive pain, especially when you hit start and you have no idea where the icon is that you want. It was a massive pain. Sure, it was cool to get little snippets of information on those live tiles, but at the end of the day, I want to see where that icon is so I can quickly click on it and just continue going on throughout my day. So having live tiles was cool, but at the same time was also to a pain because it was kind of hard to learn where everything is. Vertical scrolling was also to a little bit of a pain. It wasn't the biggest gripe that I had with the tablet experience, but at the same time, everything from your Android phone to even, hey, your iPhone, all scroll from left to right. So why Microsoft went ahead and chose the idea to scroll up and down. I really don't exactly know and it kind of got a bit confusing there. Wasn't the biggest problem, but would have just been nice to scroll left and right like every other platform on the market today. Also too, some x86 applications just did not like tablet mode and some apps just weren't really usable in full screen mode. Because tablet mode forces you to use only a full screen mode or a split screen through the Windows uh, split screening feature, you do get some applications just straight up not working and can be a real big pain. For example, Task Manager, when you do open that up, is an absolute disaster. Personally, I don't need a full screen look at Windows Task Manager. A nice little window down in the corner would have been perfectly fine, but there are just some applications, again, like Task Manager, that just really don't work in full screen mode. Again, a lot of the time, Windows does a great job at scaling things up and just making it all straight up work, 
but at the end of the day, it really doesn't need full screen applications for things like Task Manager and just gets cumbersome and hard to manage. If I wanna go ahead and do a task on my screen and just have a little Task Manager down in the corner, unfortunately I can't do that because I am limited by Windows snapping feature where you just sort of divide the screen up. Not really the greatest and can be a bit of a problem. And speaking of the whole Windows snapping thing, uh, well, productivity was definitely affected. Whilst I didn't do too much productivity applications, I did type a few things here and there in including this script, and the thing that I did definitely notice, if you want to have more than two items on the screen at once, it can definitely get a little bit challenging. Now at the same time, on a smaller tablet screen, you wouldn't exactly have more than two or three things on the screen at once, but at the end of the day, if you did want to go ahead and do that, have a couple really small windows in the corner and have your main screen up, it was basically impossible to go ahead and do with any sort of ease of customization. So tablet mode definitely does lock you down, and if you are looking into doing some productivity, it's best to probably just leave it in the general Windows 10 mode. But then finally, one problem that I do have is just no one really uses it. It's a niche within a niche within a niche. Not many people are using Windows 10 devices in tablet mode just by itself as a tablet like this, and even fewer people are using it in a tablet type of style. So at the end of the day, there's really not that much use for it. Windows 10, as I did mention at the start of the video, has gotten really good with just having touch support and touch abilities, so there isn't really that much of a need for a tablet mode. But overall, I really did enjoy my time using it as a tablet, but at the end of the day, when it comes to productivity and usability, tablet mode really just isn't there, and it's best just to leave your device in Windows 10 sort of a normal, general mode. Personally, I prefer it that way, but let me know what you think of tablet mode down in that comment section. Have you ever used it? Would you ever consider using it if you did have a tablet? Or would you prefer something like an Android or iOS tablet? Do let me know down in that comment section. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.